Uh, now call to order the April 19th meeting of the Public Affairs Committee. Um, and we'll start item one, the presentation by SEPTA representatives on the bus revolution program. Uh, and I believe tonight we have Ms. Green Harvey and Mr. Kent um, representing SEPTA. There may be others, I'm not sure who. Uh, why don't you all introduce yourselves and uh, tell us uh, how this major change is, uh, what the changes are and uh, what you expect the impact on Cheltenham Township residents will be. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Wendy Green Harvey from SEPTA Government Affairs. And Welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you both for being here. Yes, thank you for having us. Uh, we're also joined by our colleague, Brandon Miller, who is uh, with the SEPTA Service Planning Department, and he actually will be doing the presentation tonight. So Bob Ken is also on. I don't want to belabor, belabor us by doing introductions, but I would let Brandon uh, introduce himself and, and begin his presentation if he's ready. And Allison, I think he may need to share if he's able to uh, do that. Share screen. Okay, you should be able to now. And okay. We will, we will get copies of this uh, after the meeting, please. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Ann. Good evening, everybody. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, my name is Brandon Miller again. I am a senior operations planner uh, in the service planning department at SEPTA. And I'm just going to give you guys an overview of the bus revolution. So bus revolution is SEPTA's blank slate fixed route bus network redesign. <clears throat> and we started this initiative about two years ago, and it's definitely in line with uh, most transit agencies across the country. Um, and SEPTA has eagerly undertaken this effort uh, as most of our bus routes have been operating the same alignments uh, as the PTC network, right? When most of the trolleys were on the street. <clears throat> and so, Excuse me, everyone. <clears throat> um, and so when we think about, you know, land use, commercial and employment activity, so many things have changed over the years. And essentially, we're redesigning the network to ensure that we're efficiently delivering service and responding to changing demand as well as travel patterns. So this snapshot here just shows ridership, right? The primary input for the redesign. And as you can see, our ridership began to decline around 2013 after peaking in 2012. And there definitely was a strong correlation to the rise in ride share, right? And so during this time, our operating costs increased by about 10% while our service got slower for our customers and less reliable. This was totally attributed to, you know, that growth in ride share, increased volume in the streets. And then COVID-19 hit and the pandemic really, you know, exacerbated that ridership decline. And while ridership is returning, you know, we're still at about 30 to 40% below those pre-COVID levels. And so our effort is really to build a sustainable network uh, for the region. And so this graphic here just shows some statistics for the draft network compared to the existing network. Uh, this latest draft includes about 122 bus routes from the existing one of 125. This, the, we added a lot of bus routes back based on public feedback. Um, we are uh, beefing up service and you can see that we're adding um, more frequent bus routes. We are also introducing micro transit or on demand zones. Now these won't be in the Sheltonham Township region, but these will be in the more outlying areas within our service area. And this will be an on demand service uh, that really is 
filling in for the uh, the fixed route services that really don't carry people, and and so this on demand service will will serve those communities or is being proposed to serve those communities. I do want to mention that this project is cost neutral, right? And so essentially we are keeping service hours the same across the region. And so this has definitely been a rebalancing exercise since it's been cost neutral. And now I'll jump into some of the bus routes in uh, your community. And so, this map here just shows the township boundaries and the routes that are bordering Sheltonham Township or traveling through uh, your town, through the township. And I'm going to go through the quickly go through each of the proposed route changes. And just keep in mind, like this is our latest draft, but nothing is etched in stone. Right. And so, uh, you know, we're presenting this to you guys getting feedback. And so nothing's etched in stone. We are looking to go to public hearings uh, in September of this year. So now the first one I'm going to go through is new route 539. And this is uh, proposed to operate from Chestnut Hill to Frankfurt Transportation Center. Now, many people on the call might recall that SEPTA actually proposed a brand new route over a decade ago. I think it was Route 72 um, along the extent of Sheltonham Avenue. And so this is a really exciting connection, you know, creating, you know, this cross town connectivity between Northeast Philadelphia, East and West Oak Lane, and Montgomery County. This service would operate uh, 30 to 30 minutes on weekends and weekdays. Next is Route 702. Now, this route here is essentially a pattern, one of three patterns on the existing Route 55. And so a part of one of the main objectives of bus revolution is to make the system you know easier to navigate and understand and so we're really trying to minimize confusion with you know some of the, the number of patterns that we might have on a single route and patterns essentially are just routings that serve like a primary trunk and then they deviate from that trunk going to distinct destinations. And so we actually have just created a new route. This is the 55 Alney Transportation Center to Willow Grove. Um, but I have a bullet on here about the Route 80 because the Route 80 currently operates via Broad Street to Sheltonham Avenue and then Easton Road continuing out to Horsham, um, primarily UPS uh, and Horsham. And so it only operates about nine trips during peak hours and so uh, that route is proposed for discontinuation and it does border Sheltonham Township so I wanted to mention that and those resources would be reallocated um, for any customers that are making this trip they would be able to connect to route 310 and 11 up at Willow Grove Mall. Next is route 16 um, and earlier, an earlier version of the draft network actually proposed for Route 16 to end at Fern Rock Transportation Center. And based on that public feedback, uh, we actually went back and extended Route 16 back up to Sheltonham and Ogon Sloop. Um, and so this restores those critical connections between Sheltonham and Alney. Um, also want to mention, though, that we are proposing to shorten this route. Currently, it operates from Sheltonham and Ogons down to City Hall, the length of, and it's a slow moving route traveling down Broad Street. And so we are proposing to shorten this route uh, near Broad and Lehigh and North Philly, which would make the actual trips faster and more reliable due to its shorter alignment. Next is Route 22. Operating between Alney Transportation Center and Willow Grove Mall. And then it also has a pattern going all the way out to Warminster. Um, 30 minute service between Alney and Willow Grove, and then 60 minute service going out to Warminster. This is really uh, similar to today's service levels. I did want to mention that we are proposing a minor realignment south of Sheltonham Avenue. So when 22 comes south on Easton Road, and instead of traveling east on Sheltonham, it would continue Easton Road into the city uh, to Thoron Avenue and continue its journey into Alney Transportation Center. However, but again, you know, 
that connection on Sheltonham Avenue is restored via Route 16. Next is Route 24. Um, and this is from Frankfurt Transportation Center to Fox Chase Loop or Southampton. And this route borders the township over there near uh, Central Ave and Cotman Avenue. Also pretty similar to today's service levels. Um, and if you see on the maps here, these the blue lines, which are not, you know, the most legible here. Uh, these are a part of the existing route, which are proposed for discontinuation. And I know this is outside of the township, but uh, I did want to mention that. So this is Gloria Del Manor. Um, and I did want to mention that the Route 88, which does come out of the Northeast from Frankfurt Transportation Center, we are proposing to extend the Route 88, creating a new crosstown connection that would end at Willow Grove Mall. So really excited. So a real good connection for Montgomery County. And next is the 28. And so the 28, excuse me, um, this is a big change from the current routing. Um, and so it would be, we're proposing 30 minute service. And this is a new crosstown connection uh, because right now, as you can see, like the blue lines here are the existing routing, right? And so we're proposing to extend this further west, right? This is part of the 77's alignment just north of Sheltonham Township. And so this route would uh, continue, or actually we'll be shortening this route and it would be ending at Glenside Station. The Route 55, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have three distinct patterns. Uh, this route will be pretty similar to today's route, 30 minute service between Alamy and Willow Grove and 60 minute service uh, out to Doylestown. So this is a big one, everyone this evening. So this is Route 70, right? Which really travels through the heart of uh, Sheltonham Township. And so, um, let me see. I did want to mention though one thing on this 28. Excuse me for going back here like this, everyone. So on this 28, this blue line here, right? Catawalder, I believe this is like Mountain and Montgomery before it comes into the city. This segment right here, this is the only segment within Sheltonham Township that would not be served or is proposed to not be served. Uh, through bus revolution. So I did want to mention that. So this routing here, uh, Palo Wilder, Montgomery, and Mountain Avenue, those, this is the only segment within the township that is proposed to not have service. We'll have to come back to that one because that one, it seems to be about the only one that goes right through the heart of our residential areas. The others are all on the borders. Yeah, no, the, I do, the 70 does too, though. Yeah, and I was going to, and I do remember, Anne, a few years ago, we were uh, working with some the local residents and some community leaders. There were some challenges like traversing the track near the school, and there we were getting some complaints, I believe, on Mountain Drive, right, or Mountain Ave. And so um, I guess some people might be happy about that. I do know that we had received some complaints with the frequency uh, on that line, but please, you know, like I said, I will share this presentation. We'll and, talk later, sure. Yeah, you can get any input to Wendy and I'll be great. And so here's the 70. And so this is another big change. Um, and so it would be 15 minute service during uh, weekday peak periods and 30 minutes for most of the day as well as on weekends. Um, and so it would still be doing that alignment, <clears throat> excuse me, Central, Ashbourne and Oak Lane into the city. Um, and so this proposal I'm excited about because this is actually creating a brand new connection to the Trenton line over at Torresdale Regional Rail Station, right? And so now the township, you know, we're so close to the Trenton line and we have access to those northern branches at Glenside, but this route would now connect you to the Trenton line. And then this is the 77. Um, and so 
We are proposing to shorten the route at Glenside Regional Rail Station. And then that brand new route that I first introduced, 539, 539 uh, would actually provide service on these alignments or these road segments that continue south and west uh, over to Chestnut Hill. So if anyone was coming through and was trying to continue to go west into Chestnut Hill, you would have to make the transfer at Glenside Station. So this slide here, I'm just showing the uh, the actual website, this is what the website looks like. You can actually, these drop down menus, you can see the system maps, you can look at individual routes. There's also summaries of the proposed changes included. The website is septabusrevolution.com. And then just wanted to show this. This is uh, some of the webinars that we're having. There is a webinar that we're hosting on May the 8th for the counties um and so just wanted to make everyone aware of that it's may 8th and that will be for all the counties um and so you can go to septabusrevolution.com to register and then i wanted to share this so as a part of public engagement we're doing uh project bus events where we're meeting customers where they are and so we're at transportation centers or just major activity centers and so on wednesday april 26th um we will be at Willow grove mall it is in mont coast we just wanted to make everybody aware and again you can see all of the events on up the bus revolution.com and so I just wanted to give you guys an overview of our timeline. Please excuse, this needs to be updated. So we're actually here, all right? Um, between these two dots here, where we're sharing uh, the updated draft and getting feedback, um, we'll be continuing to conduct uh, engagement throughout the summer, looking to finalize the network in preparation to go to the public hearings in September. And that concludes my overview. Uh, and so now we'll open the floor for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Miller. I do appreciate it. Um, first, I'll ask my fellow commissioners, uh, any, any comments, questions from the commissioners? I, I do have one question. Uh, Mr. Miller, how much of this change has to do with the lack of, um, I know you guys are having an issue with um, staffing. Um, and I know you mentioned ridership, but you didn't say anything about, you know, there seemed to be a shortage of bus drivers and things, I hear that. Uh, yes. Does any of this have to do with that also? Because that's not in your report. So the staffing challenges that we're experiencing have not really been, um, you know, they, that wasn't really the impetus for this. It was definitely ridership. Now, with respect to implementation of some of these proposed changes, you know, the operator shortages would definitely impact how we would roll out or implement these service changes, All right. So not so much um, in the design of it. We have been more recently scaling back some of or just modifying some of the proposals as we're looking at the, the trends for operator availability. Um, but the operator shortage really would impact, you know, how we roll this out. Okay. So that okay. So you've answered my question. So you can so you can want this and plan it, but if you don't have the staffing, then everything would just stay the same, I would assume. I wouldn't say necessarily stay the same. So it's a great question, but I will say that we are looking to, so we, we were always planning to phase in these changes over the course of two years. So uh, we're looking, we're hoping to start in the summer of 24. Um, and so we would be making changes and then we would be continuing throughout, you know, throughout, throughout the following year. Um, and so there have been efforts, you know, to ramp up, you know, our intake for operators. And so again, like those operator trends will really kind of decide, you know, uh, these 
when some of these changes might go in and it really might just be like the scale of change right so you know some of these routes like i mentioned the route 88 that's proposed to be extended from the northeast to willow grove that will require a lot more operators to operate that 30 minute service so you know this isn't an official answer but you know if we got to that point where we're ready for implementation and the manpower isn't there you know like a service concept like that would likely need to be paused all right okay all right thank you thank you Mr. Bill. thank you um does our staff have any questions or concerns they want to raise okay i see we do have some members of uh our, our, our residents who want to talk and then um, I, I did have some concerns, but I'll, I'll go to the residents first. Mr. S Mr. Sanders, I see your hand up. Please, please go ahead. Yes, good evening, Commissioner. Um, <laughs> I, I want to say a few words on behalf of uh, the existing alignment of uh, Route 28. Uh, I uh, myself uh, live on Cadwallader Avenue. Uh, I've been a resident of Cheltenham Township uh, most of my life. Uh, one of the many benefits of living in Cheltenham uh, uh, is the uh, uh, ready accessibility of uh, public transportation uh, on which I, as a, um, <laughs> a car-free individual, um, I'm reliant for uh, uh, personal uh, mobility. Uh, as long as I have uh, lived here, I, I have been able to uh, walk uh, half a block in either direction to uh, to catch the 28 bus, uh, uh, either to uh, uh, the terminus of the Broad Street subway or to uh, Elkins Park Station. Uh, uh, three quarters of a mile uh, from my home. Um, I, uh, as uh, as we have all uh, heard, uh, in pursuance of the bus revolution, SEPTA has uh, proposed to uh, eliminate nearly the uh, entire north-south segment uh, of the route and to uh, redirect the service uh, westward uh, to Glenside Station uh, in duplication of the service already uh, provided by Route 77. Uh, the passengers who uh, depend upon the uh, north-south uh, segment of uh, Route 28 uh, will, uh, in, in contravention of SEPTA's uh, service standards, uh, essentially uh, be left uh, stranded. Uh, in other words, SEPTA has proposed to move the service from where it is needed to where it is not. Um, I can't help wondering uh, uh, what then is the justification for this uh, uh violation of the service standards uh, uh in addition if uh, implemented this proposal will uh eradicate the uh, fallback service that route 28 now provides to uh melrose park and elkins park stations during the uh, recurrent uh, disruptions of service on the railroad division um uh, I think it's significant that the uh, direct Route 28 alternative service at Elkins Park Station is clearly stated on the Warminster, West Trenton, and Glenside combined timetables. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, when I've uh, uh, finished speaking, the uh, uh, SEPTA representative could uh, uh, cite a precedent for uh, such an eradication of uh, connecting service. Uh, I myself am I'm hard pressed to uh, to think of one. Uh, and of course, for the students who uh, who now travel on Route 28 to, to Manor College from Cheltenham, East Oak Lane, or or North Philly, uh, the trip will uh, involve an additional transfer and a wait as long as another half hour. Uh, is there convenience uh, uh, of no importance at all to SEPTA? 
Um, uh, and um, uh, of course, if implemented, the uh, the proposal will triple the number of buses operating on Glenside Avenue, which features a hairpin turn near Hilltop Lane and which uh, experiences uh, frequent congestion near Easton Road. Uh, Glenside Avenue uh, is uh, uh, already uh, uh, adequately served by Route 77, which uh, comfortably uh, accommodates the limited number of passengers traveling to or from uh, Northwest Philadelphia. Uh, what then is the justification for such a, a dramatic increase in service? Uh, um, yeah, okay. Um, um, uh, I have uh, uh, identified uh, numerous uh, uh, options for uh, increasing the uh, 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 ridership and the productivity of uh, uh, the north-south uh, uh, segment uh, of, of Route 28. Uh, I've already uh, uh, presented a, a couple of them uh, to uh, SEPTA officials at the various uh, um, uh, community conversations and, and transit talks and uh, um, open houses, uh, but uh, thus far they, they, they have all uh, uh, fallen on, uh, on, on deaf ears. Um, uh, and uh, uh, to, to, uh, uh, <laughs> to, to add insult to injury, uh, uh, on February 20th, I received uh, from, from Ryan Judge uh, SEPTA's Director of uh, Strategic Planning and Analysis, a letter advising me that the uh, North-South segment had been, uh, quote, reinstated, unquote, uh, via Melrose Park and Elkins Park stations as an element of a new route extending be between Fern Rock Transportation Center and uh, uh, Willow Grove Mall. Uh, uh, the, the question that... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, begs for an answer is uh, uh, why is this route missing from the uh, updated draft network and uh, 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 why have uh, the various uh, other options uh, 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 which I have identified and which uh, uh, others have identified as well uh, apparently failed to uh, uh, receive the uh, uh, consideration that they deserve. Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you for uh, the opportunity to uh, um, express my concerns on this issue. And uh, okay, thank uh, you, Mr. Sanders. We'll yeah. have. Uh, why don't we have uh, Mr. Miller or someone who's in a position to to address maybe some of the points that you brought up? Yes. Um, to be able Thanks, to Ms. Rappaport. Uh, Thank you. So, firstly, Mr. Sanders, I do apologize for you know any confusion around you know any of the correspondences uh, or, or 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 addressing any of your questions or complaints. Um, I do want to say that any information that you're passing on is not falling on deaf ears, right? We are responding to you know. We're trying to respond to everything. And so uh, as Ms. Rappaport stated when I first showed this slide, she's like, hey, this is concerning because this is coming through the heart of the township, right? Um, I do know that there had been some earlier interest uh, in, you know, creating a connection to that Northern branch on the regional rail network you know, from the lower Northeast, right? Ron and the, the you, Sir, you're breaking up. I don't know if it's just me or uh, if other people can't no. hear you as well. Uh, I can. Now it's across its bandwidth on his end. Okay, Mr. Miller, sometimes I'm told if you take away it's your visual, we can hear you better. Uh, can hear the audio better so yeah brandon i think we we missed a lot of what if you were continuing to talk we missed a lot of but yeah if you might want to turn your camera off okay yeah sorry thank that's, you that's that's better mm -hmm. that's better 
Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just was saying that, oh gosh, sorry. You know, there definitely had been some request or interest to connect lower Northeast Philadelphia to uh, the Northern branch on the rail network. And so Glensot was that closest location. Mm -hmm. Totally understand your concerns about, you know, this direct connection to the Broad Street line, you know, based on its proximity, exactly. And your point about disruptions to the railroad and how, you know, the 28 is a viable alternative is well taken. So I just wanna assure you, Mr. Sanders, that, you know, this would this is being documented and, um, Apologize for any confusion, but we'll go ahead and we'll we'll revisit this. So hopefully we'll be presenting a different um, concept to you on this one. I do want to mention, though, again, nothing is etched in stone. Uh, I did recently have a conversation, you know, with uh, the PM for the project. And so, you know, we're looking at end of line locations, you know, we're introducing a lot of new end of line locations. And so capacity is a concern at Glenside, right? You mentioned Hilltop Avenue. So we are aware of, you know, the potential challenges with even traversing the property, right? And so it's possible that we might not be able to get in there you know even though the 77 is only hourly but even with this 30 minute route so um it's a lot of moving pieces here so all i can say is stay tuned on that but you know any input that you're providing is not falling on deaf ears but thank you for your comments well i i i would like to add too just from the township uh perspective because uh, we we certainly have um, more than just the one resident, uh, Cadwallader is a very wide, relatively wide residential street in the township. And it's one that residents know and have long valued as a major bus route. Um, I, what I find concerning, again, is the repetition, what what you all were showing at the beginning, you know, with the slides, so much went through the major arteries around us, rather than taking advantage of the heart of, of our uh, population centers and those who count on, because of their residence and their walkability, uh, those bus lines that are are really appropriate for those places. And taking people to the destinations effectively and efficiently, as you pointed out, those are some of the criteria. That's what, what we need on behalf of our residents, those who are um, car free, those who are uh, trying to support public transit as opposed to uh, putting more congestion on our roads and other things. Um, and what you all said at the beginning about the impetus for the revolution, um, the whole idea of, of trying to get people to the destinations, going with the, the, the new places that people are working, trying to, um, to get to their destinations. Well, that is a bit circular because if you take it away, you're also destroying the, the possibility that Cheltenham can be that viable spot. And I think what, what concerns me as as an elected official of this community is that we want Cheltenham to have access uh, and we don't, we don't want the trade-offs that it goes to our boundaries or that it, the transit is redundant uh, and that the same lines do the same thing that we already have um, multiple, multiple lines doing. So I, I think when you when you pose, I mean, just looking at that map of Cheltenham, 
you know, taking away such a, an important piece to our residents and that serves a huge section um, of walkable uh, residents. I, I'm concerned about that. So uh, I, I think, I, you know, you need to hear Cheltenham Township, not just one or two residents <coughs> who, who can come out tonight. Yes. Uh, thanks for that input. This is Rappaport, definitely uh, noted. Um, no, I, I definitely understand. I, I totally understand you and Mr. Sanders' concerns, and particularly, right, the fact that the 28 currently is really traversing, like, the heart of, of the township. So um, we'll be we'll be reevaluating this one, you know, based on you guys' feedback, for sure, because that's been the process. It's been a very iterative process. You know, thank you for the opportunity for us to even join you all this evening. And so that's how it's gone. We've met with communities. We've met with elected officials. We're getting feedback. And it's like in some cases, you know, we're not going back to the drawing board wholesale, but we are having to look at individual routes again and make adjustments, you know, to ensure that, you know, it's still useful to the community, right? And so, you know, that's why we're here tonight. So thank you for- yeah, And I, I think the the- Cheltenham does uh, need to be on, <laughs> on in your sights in a positive way. Um, I see if you have another minute before you all leave, I, I see another resident uh, with a hand up, Mr. England. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Rappaport, uh, and thank you for your advocacy. Um, I just, I don't want to go over what has already been said. Uh, I have the slider map up. Uh, which is a nice tool that you have there, uh, Mr. Miller. And it shows uh, exactly what the concern is, which is eliminating the bus lines through the middle of the community. There was at least one or two occasions. Uh, I used to have a job in Center City, and I would take the train out of Elkins Park. Uh, there have been a couple of occasions in the time that I've lived here where there were problems with the regional rail, and our only way to connect to downtown was to be able to take that bus line um, that is uh, on the block to be removed uh, to be able to connect over to uh, the bus terminal uh, at only uh, on only. Um, so that that is maybe a bit of a redundance, but there are a lot of people who are riding the bus uh, who don't typically uh, are not going the route of the trains. But in the occasion where there's an issue with the trains, uh, whether it be lines down, uh, problems with labor or whatever the case may be, uh, if that route disappears, there's nothing to connect the center part of our community uh, to, to the rest of SEPTA's line. Uh, it's not viable to be able to get out to the edges of the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. England, for that. Thank you. Okay. Uh if uh, nobody else has anything at this time, um, we'll, we'll look forward to receiving it and then uh, giving you some written feedback from the uh, from the township because I, I think this is um, of, of serious interest. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rappaport. Have a good evening, everyone. You all too. Make sure your time. Thank you, commissioners. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Have a good one. Appreciate Thanks. it. Okay, we're going to move on to item two in public affairs, uh, the approval of expenditures over $2,500. Um, item 2A, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a blanket purchase order for Home Depot credit card service in the amount of $7,500 for various building purchases for 2023. And we have an attachment. Um, Anything from our staff or from fellow commissioners? A uh, quick question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Quick question. Sure. Go ahead, Commissioner. Is, is this for a Home Depot credit card, or is this something we already have? A Depot credit card, or is this something we're seeking to acquire? 
Um, we, uh, Alan, correct me if I'm wrong, but we do have a Home Depot credit card. Um, so this is basically the amount of money that we hopefully intend to spend or less throughout the year. So that should cover cover that. Thank you. Okay, I, I was a little confused because many of them appeared to be for 2022. So I wasn't sure why it says 2023 on it, here. Is it going forward or going backward? Commissioner Rappaport, that was just like vendor payment history. So you can kind of see from last year what we ended up spending. Um, so you had something to reference for this. Okay. Year. So that's what that is. Okay, thank you for clarifying. And so building purchases, uh, it wasn't clear. Give, you know, can somebody just give us an example of two or three of those building purchases so we know what we're talking about? Yes, good evening, commissioners. Um, so, Hi, Mr. Brown. hello, this is just um, for our day to day, um, whatever we may need. Um, if whether it's plumbing, electrical, anything, whatever, um, we try to do a lot of the um, repairs in house. So okay. if anything happens, we'll go to Home Depot, we'll buy the parts and we'll make the necessary repairs. We like to okay. spend local, so. Do we, do we get any kind of discount because of uh, any? Uh, we, we, they, we do have a tax exempt uh, yeah. number, so we don't pay any taxes. And, um, and there are different incentive programs that do pop up throughout the year. So we do take advantage of anything that may pop up. Okay, that, I just wonder if there's any other uh, arrangements that might make it more cost effective, but okay, uh, that, that answers my question. Shelton. I'm sorry. Uh, we're, we're, shopping Shelton. we're shopping yeah. in Shelton here. Right, right. Okay. Um, if there are no other questions or comments, uh, I'll take a motion. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Item 2B, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a blanket purchase order for Oliver Fire Protection, the amount of $5,000 for annual fire alarm contract and all necessary fire alarm repairs. Any comments, questions? Quick question. That's for question. Township buildings? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear the question. I don't know if staff can read it. Um, yeah, Commissioner, that is for township owned properties. Okay, thank you. Okay. Take a motion. So move. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item C, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order in the amount of $6,300 to rec desk for the annual fee for Parks and Rec online registration, program management, and payment software. So my question on that is, this is a uh, sort of, a, we, we walk back a little bit. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Good evening, Commissioners. Yes. Um, so we were unable to come to agreement with some of the terms our legal team as well as their legal team over at ActiveNet um, in time to begin registration for the summer season. Uh, so we ended up deciding to just go ahead and renew uh, Rec Desk one more year so we have some more time to work things out with ActiveNet. So we're still in hopes that we can um, you know, get on board with them for next year. Uh, but for right now, we'll, we'll have to push through with Rec Desk just because of how the timing worked out. I know you when when you were with us the last time about this, there was a very tight time. So that's correct. How is it working out with Rec Desk now? Because uh, I know um, there were problems with them in the past. Yes. So it's it's not perfect. Um, we are making certain tweaks to the software to make it as efficient as possible. Um, it still doesn't have a lot of the capabilities that ActiveNet would have. Um, but there's certain things that we are able to do to make things a little bit more smooth um, as it pertains to like customer service as well as entry um, and tracking and reporting for this season. Um, so we'll, we'll make it work essentially. It's, it's not the greatest, but um, it's going to be better than it was last year. That's for sure. Great. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah. 
Yeah, and if I could jump in, um, I would say I want to thank Fabian and our solicitor for working through the contract details. It was a very unwieldy contract. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we woke ActiveNet and its legal team up to that yeah. fact. Um, I so I, I think they are willing to work with us. It's just, it's just going to take a little bit more time than we actually had. So um, I think we'll be able to come up with a, a good contract at the end of the day for next year. Good. Thank you. Uh, I'll make the motion to uh, approve that purchase order or to recommend approving it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Get everybody there? Okay. Uh, thank you. Item D consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a revised quote in the amount of $15,010 to advantage print and design for printing and mailing of the 2023-24 annual report and calendar. Um, uh, somebody wanna talk to that? I'll, I'll jump in in case, Lauren. She seems to be having some internet uh, issues tonight. Okay. Um, so this is just for the annual um, printing and mailing of the calendar. Um, if she is on, um, she may be able to tell you how, how it does compare. Um, but I know she's been working very hard um, with selling ad space again and doing very well with it. Um, so, hi, I'm, I'm, thank you, you Allison. I'm going to try to jump in without the video in case that helps on the internet end. Um, that did pretty much cover it, but in between when I brought you the original quote um, and printing of the newsletter, we I, I took a deep dive into the mailing list, um, worked on a new list from the tax office and uh, combined it with past addresses in the condos, making sure everyone was covered, followed the room patterns, and we added about 400 additional addresses, um, businesses included. So um, we did have to just get a cost increase for the mail setup. It was about $20. Well, thank you for... Uh... Uh, you know, updating the mailing list because I think that's a useful thing to do. Um, so thank you, even though it, it might have netted us a little more money, uh, a little more calls. You know. I agree. I agree. Um, uh, let me ask this um, because there were two different numbers, I thought. Uh, somewhere it said, uh, uh, I think we're talking the numbers of the mailings, uh, 16,500. But if you add the fourteen, so if you yeah, add the, the fourteen five hundred and the twenty five hundred, that's not what you get. So I don't know. There seemed to be an inconsistency. Sixteen five, sixteen five is what we will have printed, um, and we increased the amount for mail setup from fourteen thousand to fourteen five. Um, and the remainder are going to be delivered to the township building as always. We distribute them to the school district, the libraries, and we give them out throughout the year. Um, I don't think that we need an additional amount printed, but it's great that we know more will be direct mailed. So we didn't need to increase printing costs, only mail set up for, we, we bumped 500 addresses. Okay, so so for whatever reason, it's not really twenty five hundred. Then it's it's two thousand. Yes, I must have. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. All right. Anybody else? All right. I'll I'll make the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, item E: Consider recommending the board of commissioners approve. A purchase order for Waterman in the amount of $6,136.45 for the purchase of uniforms for the Parks and Recreation Department. And I notice it isn't just uniforms, it's also lifeguard equipment and emergency yes. type uh, equipment. So, That's right. Yes, yeah. yes. So we need um, two new uh, spine boards, one for each location as well as the accessories that go with them. So the backboard straps, as well as the head immobilizers in case we have an emergency. Sure. And um, all of our tubes, our lifeguard tubes were all in terrible shape. So we have to replace all of those. Um, I was able to negotiate the price down a bit from actually what it's showing. So it's gonna be closer to 5,900, might be a little bit less than that actually. 
uh, for everything listed on uh, on the invoice that they sent over to us or on the quote. I'm sorry. Um, so every yes, little so bit helps. Thank yes, you. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm trying to to maximize from our budget as much as possible. So I'm always trying to negotiate. Right there. Thank you for doing that. Of we course. do appreciate absolutely. it. Any any comments or questions? Okay, uh, I, you're getting you're getting applause too. I don't know if you're seeing. Them. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll I'll make the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Consider F. Consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Buckman's in the amount of twenty eight thousand five hundred for the purchase of chlorine for both township pools. And is that for the full season? Yes, yes, that should be enough to cover uh, the full season. Um, that would be for chlorine as well as any other chemicals to raise a lower pH, as well as the alkalinity um, and, and such. So they provide pretty much all the chemicals that we use for the pools through Buckland. How often um, is the chemistry checked? Um, so we have what are called chemical controllers connected to both pools. Uh, we won't know the status, the working status of those controllers until we get things up and running, the pool filled, as well as the pumps turned on. Uh, so we'll have a technician come out to take a look because I think it's been a couple of years since we've actually uh, used those. Uh, they've been manually feeding chemicals in the past. But once we get those up and running, um, it will be maintained constantly, 24-7. Um, so as the water needs more chlorine, it will inject more chlorine into it as it needs more CO2 and so on and so on. Um, so it's completely self-sufficient. Is there any other check of the equipment? You know, so yeah. is there a manual, uh, you know, a, a human yes. <laughs> uh, monitor yes. on top of that? Absolutely, absolutely. We, we test the water every four hours um, or, or quicker than that, but that's uh, pretty much the, the standard. Um, and it's a requirement in many states too, as I imagine in Pennsylvania also too. So yeah, every every four hours, uh, we're testing the water manually um, for pH as well as ORP, which is like the chemical power of the chlorine um, and, and everything else that's required, the calcium and all of that. Great, thank you. I just, people like to be reassured. Oh, oh yes, 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 absolutely. We're, we're not, not completely replacing ourselves with a machine. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, I have a question. Yes, go ahead, Commissioner uh, Rockington. Fabian, um, how are we looking this year for opening everything on time and staffing and things like that? Great question. Yes, um, so, so far we're doing, we're doing pretty well. Um, overall for the pools, we're at about 45% of the staffing uh, account that we need, but luckily we have a little bit of buffer where we're opening up Glenside first uh, prior to Conklin. Um, so I think we'll have all the staff we need in place by then. We're doing anywhere between three to six interviews a day uh, between the pools and the summer camps. So we're trying to get people in as quickly as possible. And we're hoping at the middle of next month to, to host orientation with all staff for both pools. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, question, Madam Chair. Yeah, go ahead, Commissioner uh, Lewis. Fabian, when's uh, uh, opening day? Uh, opening day will be the holiday weekend next month, uh, Memorial Day weekend uh, will be opening um, and it will just be weekends only, that'll be at Glenside, it'll be weekends only until we get to uh, June the 17th when all of our staff or a majority of our staff get out of school. So that's when uh, both schools will have their grand opening, quote unquote, where they'll be open seven days a week. Thank you. Hey, mm -hmm. Madam Chair, just one more jump in. Fabian, sure. I think I see something today that the school district announced um, when this the last day of school. They did announce that today on oh, their website. Job. So I don't have it in front of me, but they did announce it because Good. of lack of snow days. They're actually going to be closing a little bit earlier, oh, probably. Fantastic. So I don't know if you can adjust your opening to that. I'm sure parents would appreciate um, the pools being open once the schools close. Definitely, definitely. I'll look into that tomorrow. And yes, we, we're willing to open as soon as we have staff ready to go. We're, we're looking to open. So that's yeah. Yep. I think, Matt, do you have that date? Yeah, the 13th. The 13th. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank great. you for, for yeah, raising yeah. that. I yeah. appreciate that. Okay, uh, we need to go back. And uh, we were on F. So uh, I'll move the purchase of the chlorine. Uh, all in favor? 
Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to item three, receipt of the reports from our property maintenance supervisor, public information officer, and director of parks and rec. Are there questions, comments, concerns? From the board first. And we'll go to the uh, public. Dan George, I see your hand. Uh, yeah, the um, Parks and Rec's report mentioned uh, collaboration with the school department on uh, use of space going forward. I was just curious what if anything has come about as a result of that, or what do you anticipate will come about as a result of that? Hey, Dan, uh, great question. Hi. So nothing quite yet. Uh, we're still in the process of trying to work things out, um, but we're hoping to be able to access some gymnasium space, to be able to start doing some active programming there, potentially some adult leagues, sports, as well as multi-sport for the youth. Um, and also the potential to open up um, some of that space for a future summer camp um, collaboration. Um, as well as one other thing that I'm looking into too is potentially access to the pool so we can offer lifeguard certification classes. Um, so we can get folks from this season recertified as well as we can have ongoing certification classes for the future. Um, so we're not running into the same issue again that we're kind of facing this year where everybody is lapsing at the same time. So we have about 20 or 30 guards that need research. Um, so those are the big pushes at the moment. And then we can see where the relationship goes from there. Okay, thank you. I was actually, uh, what piqued my curiosity about that um, line item was the experience we had over 2022 with really uh, dysfunction in trying to communicate with the school department on those very subjects. And I was wondering if you're finding that that's improved. Uh, it's, we're, we're getting there. Um, there's, still, there's still challenges, uh, okay. but we're, we're getting there. We're trying, we're trying to form more relationships um, with multiple locations of the schools as well as different administrators and things like that. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier for us to have these kind of discussions. Uh, but we still have a little bit of work cut out for us. <laughs> That's Thank for sure. you. No problem. Madam Chair? Um, I yeah, go ahead. I, 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 I kind of want to circle back, Fabian. You mentioned the um, lifeguard program with the high school. My understanding, we did that prior to COVID. We had that type of program with mm -hmm. the high school. And it was COVID that just kind of got rid of, you know, put that on hold. So mm -hmm. I'm surprised that you're getting, if you're getting pushback from them in reference it, to that program, because we did that. Sure. It's, it's, it's not, not so much pushback, pushback it's just, just not getting much responses have been so it was no, so it was no push at all yeah yeah there's, there's no, no push, push at all it's just they're they're, they're um it, it can be tough, tough to get in touch with, with folks over there a lot well, of times you know i'm gonna to dan and to ann we need to bring yep. that up at the next uh liaison my, meeting been writing that down yeah <laughs> we're, we will put that on our agenda at the next liaison meeting because that should be automatic we've done that in the past that was one right. way our lifeguards got trained, got certified with That's at right. their pools. Yes. So yes. And, and, and many times when I when I work in conjunction with groups like that too, I mean we can take on some of their staff too. So they have lifeguards that work there um, at that pool, we'll gladly take them into the class, well, we'll look into potential discounts, things like that. So it could be mutually beneficial. I mean, they have a swim team. That should be our lifeguards. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That they is true. Swim team. That is true. And many of our staff go to that high school. So, okay. yes, absolutely. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And I, I was going to hold this off for new business, but uh, while you're there on the Parks and Rec, you know, before you take off, um, I, I'm going to raise this. Uh, I've been hearing some concerns from the public um, about handicap equipment, accessible equipment at our parks. And I remember gosh, uh, probably five years ago, um, we were worrying about uh, the status of one of the swings at, at Wall Park uh, that, that was useful for, for young, young people who have disabilities and can't swing. And what is the status of repair on that particular piece of equipment? 
Uh, and if you don't know tonight, you can get back to us. But what, what's the uh, status of that one? And are there others um, that are available? And what are we doing in terms of moving forward with any accessible playground equipment? Absolutely, great question. So I don't have any information as it pertains to that specific site you're speaking on, um, but I know as we do any renovations or updates to any of the playgrounds that should and will be for me at least the top priority is to make sure that it's ADA accessible, as well as we have some ADA offerings at that site also too. So once they get there, making sure that they have a swing set that they can go on and so on and so on. Um, so it's, it's definitely something that's important to me. And um, yeah, as we assess all the playgrounds that we have around the township, um, that's the first thing and the, the most important thing to me is making sure that everything is accessible. But well, I'll find uh, okay, information so as it relates to the location you were speaking on. All right. If we could, if we could follow up with that, I'd really appreciate, you know, sure. uh, because, and and if there is something, I I know it there what had been, it, it was in disrepair. We certainly don't want something there that's not in good repair, but we do need to replace it and and move forward with more than just one uh, throughout the township. So Absolutely. thank you. Thanks no very problem. much. Yes. No. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, township manager, sure. am I, yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, have Fabian just take a moment just to talk about some of the uh, camp offerings he he's planning for the summer, just to give everyone a heads up. Yes, I would love to. Um, so I'm super excited for this summer. Uh, we are going to be hosting potentially three camp locations. We have two that are already signed off on, which would be Roland as well as Lamont as the host locations for this summer. Um, those two locations will be taking on a total of 145 children uh, from age five all the way up to age 12. Uh, they'll be doing all types of activities, indoors and outdoors. Um, there will be a small amount of gymnasium space, of course, in, in those facilities too, to do some active programming, as well as we're looking into potential field trips, water days, bringing in presentations and everything in between. Um, the third location we are looking into and are in the final stages of finalizing um, is the parish house over at All Hallows in Wincote, um, which used to operate as a nursery school. Uh, so they have multiple classrooms there. They have two auditoriums, full-size kitchen, um, performing art stage and things like that. So this year we're thinking of introducing a specialty camp and an arts camp over there uh, for students that are interested in the performing arts or folks that are interested in arts and crafts. Uh, so we'll have two tracks that you could take over there and it'll really be geared and focused on those um, forms of art, as well as they'd be putting on a show at the end, um, and an art show for those that are doing the arts and crafts, as well as a performance for the folks that are doing performing arts. Um, and it's been, we've been hearing a lot of feedback from the public of looking for something a little bit more specialty and niche like that. So I think it's something that could really take off, especially since the arts are really having kind of a renaissance right now. Sounds exciting. It is. Thank you. And so also, especially, uh, Making sure that there is programming for Lamont and um, Roland is is also very exciting, and I hope that that information really gets out there and and uh, and shared with, with everybody who's concerned. Absolutely, and uh, the PIO uh, Lauren has been fantastic, fantastic with getting the marketing out there for all of these things. Um, since we are partnering with Al Hollows too, they plan on promoting it. Um, at their services, they're planning on putting yard signs there in their surrounding area, which has a ton of um, youth in that community. Um, so we don't anticipate it being much an issue to try and get these things filled up. Madam Chair. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Norris. Um, yeah, I just want to give special kudos to Fabian and uh, for uh, particularly for any citizens who are residents who are uh, listening to this. Uh, Fabian has been on board. Is it six months or is it it's less than even. six months Go it's not even by. okay not, <laughs> not but not even six months and uh and uh, certainly kelly rabbits deserves a, a a lot of uh uh kudos also uh you guys are just doing a great job the the description that you just gave of of the camps and the number of students who are signing yeah. up and the fact that you're looking at a third camp very impressive so a big thank, thank you. you yeah i appreciate it it's my pleasure thank, thank you all and thank you, uh, President Norris, for saying that. That that was helpful. Uh, and Mr. George again.
We're not hearing you. You just removed your hand. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. I wasn't planning on raising this, and I'll I'll add to the list of uh, kudos to uh, Fabian because uh, this kind of dovetails with what you had asked about adaptive sports. Uh, as one of the offshoots with um, our partnership with Salus over the winter, <clears throat> they had reached out to us uh, to help them with a clinic in middle of June. Uh, that this is the second time that they've sponsored it on their uh, campus, which goes over adaptive sports. Um, and it's an entire weekend uh, that they basically demo and present materials about that subject. Um, and uh, Fabian's aware of this uh, and has encouraged us to proceed. Uh, we were asked to actually be part of that. Um, and as a result, um, we're actually looking at a component of uh, the pickleball programming that we offer that actually has an adaptive uh, mm -hmm. aspect to it. Um, it is That's very new um, and it requires special equipment since you mentioned that, that's why I thought about it. Uh, and we're gonna look seriously at that um, and having a program nearby where there are people engaged in, um, in a larger sense, adaptive sport um, uh, engagement um, will be a very useful resource for the township, um, especially with the students there that are taking those programs. Um, so something to keep in mind about something we never expected. That was an offshoot of something that we did for really other reasons, but there you go. Um, so look for more information about that as time goes forward. Great. Thank you very I, much. I, yep. I have yeah, another I, question. Go ahead, Commissioner Brockington. I, I guess I want to bring um, Alan Brown into the conversation now. Alan, um, you know, I see that we're going to be using Lamont and Roland um, in the gyms and the bathrooms and all those things, and it's going to be hot and AC. I'm going to ask you if you can kind of give us, uh, you know, are the buildings ready? For, for this activity and, you know, you know, because if it's raining, the kids are going to have to be inside on those rainy days in, in the summer and, yeah. you know, during the summer. Are the buildings, both buildings going to be ready for this? So we are in the process of doing a lot of things right now as we speak. Um, we're working on pools, but the community centers are one of our top priorities to get them up and running for camp. Okay, so you you think they'll be ready by the time? <laughs> that's the plan. I guess. That's, a that's a definite yes. <laughs> and and Commissioner, true. I will say um, we are using limited space within the community centers, which will focus on the areas that are usable and safe. That's correct. And so this is going to be more. more uh, I was just going to say, we have a little bit more time luckily we to get those spaces ready, too, because summer camp won't be starting until the end of June. So, so we have more June. time to get these up to speed as compared to the pools. Okay. All and right. it, I think also, it, if I'm not speaking inappropriately, I think at one of our agendas, maybe it was last week or sometime in the last month, we did approve, I think, uh, uh, an item to go to bid for or to uh, try to... Uh, uh, add some maintenance, uh, some janitorial effort so that we can um, use Mr. Brown in, in uh, uh, some of these other more, um, I, I won't say, let's call it more pressing uh, ways uh, and, and more visible ways uh, for the community. So that employment. Will the camps also be going over to the pools? Some doing also? Great question. Um, yeah, so that's something that we're in the midst of right now. To the last few days, we've been trying to reach out. This is all based on being able to get bus drivers. Um, so we reached out to a few different organizations. It's looking good so far. So I'm hopeful. Uh, we're pushing for weekly trips, but it's looking like more realistically, it might be bi weekly. So every other week, um, we'll get the campers over to the pool. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's strictly based off of bus availability and drivers. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Brown. Um, 
Jerry. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, Hi, Jerry. I just wanted the kudos again to uh, Allison, Fabian, Alan, the, all the commissioners and everybody that's really helped out. Every time I had a question about Lamont, you'd always get back to me. You, you may not have the answer, but you always cared. And that means a lot to us and it means a lot to the community. So to all of you, I really appreciate you. And I just wanted you to know that, okay? Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jerry. Thank you we appreciate you, Jerry. Okay, uh, I think we're ready to uh, approve the receipt of those three reports in item three. I'll uh, so move. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item four, receipt of committee meeting report uh, minutes, historical commission, economic development task force, and substance abuse and mental health committee. Any discussion? I'll take a motion to receive. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, oh, and the Civil Rights Task Force. Sorry about that. Yeah, it was on the other side. Uh, missed that one, uh, including that one. Um, item five, uh, receipt of staff meeting minutes for both March 1st and March 30th. Any comment? Also move, all in favor? Aye. 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 Old business for public affairs, item six. New business for public affairs, uh, item A, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners authorize approval of a resolution authorizing the filing of a grant application under Montgomery County's uh, fiscal 2023 Community Development Block Grant Program for the purpose of making safety, security, energy, and efficiency improvements to Lamont Community Center 2023. Jump okay. in. Um, so this is one of approximately five grants that we have submitted so far this spring um, for the Lamont Community Center. Um, this one, uh, if we're successful, which I hope we will be, um, we've had a, a lot of good success with this program uh, for the Lamont community. Um, we will um, use it toward um, increase, putting in additional safe security cameras, um, locking doors for key swipes, uh, heat, um, air conditioning for the gym, um, and other safety and security measures to help the, the facility open. Um, my goal was to be able to have everything uh, for this fall, but the timing of this grant is that it won't be awarded until October. Um, and so, and then we have to go through their pretty rigorous um, bidding process. So um, the goal is to be able to get all these improvements together so the facility can stay open next fall and winter. Um, and I would also like to say that this is combined with um, the other grants. So total um, that we've submitted um, with to federal, state, and local um, entities is over $4 million. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, Mitch and Brad for all their efforts in helping submit these grants as well. Commissioner Rappaport. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, just, Commissioner Franski. I, I, I want to add a thanks for that, Dave. Allison and staff have been extremely helpful on this, and Mitch has been outstanding with the work he's been doing in between coughing. Um, mm -hmm. There are, we are overwhelming them with grants and requests, uh, meeting requests and everything that we can possibly put together. Uh, it is definitely on their radar, mostly because we're not letting them take it off. So hopefully some of these will come through sooner than later uh, so we can have some doors open in whatever capacity soon enough. And if we're successful with these grants, we'll move on to the next center. <laughs> Thank you. And by the Thank way, Irv, very much. Irv, you are not forgotten in all of this. It's just a Thank question you. of how they parse these out. We've been we we keep mentioning uh, the, the Roland Center in every conversation. Thank you very much. Really, with appreciation, uh, so moved and all favor. Aye. 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 <clears throat> Thank you. Um, other new business. Um, I'll propose also that we uh, 
provide a, a civic recognition award to um, a team, uh, Jeffrey Selling and Krissa Peterson. Um, these folks have been working for several years as regular volunteers outside of any program or anything, just because they care on Curtis Arboretum. And they have been transforming uh, the place uh, and in cooperation with our public works and our parks group, um, they've been doing uh, phenomenal work. Uh, so uh, Oka has asked, Oka, the uh, friends of Curtis Arboretum have asked uh, for recognition in a public setting uh, uh, and it's well earned. Uh, anybody who's been there has seen piles of invasives and that and plantings and that just doesn't even touch it. So uh, I will move that we uh, go forward with uh, a uh, civic uh, recognition for those individuals. Uh, do we need to vote on that, Allison? Or, uh, yeah, that would be great. Thank you. All right. Any any questions about that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Any any holdbacks? I just couldn't hear. Okay. Thank you. Um, if there's no other new business, we'll move on to announcements. <coughs> well, you know that uh, PennDOT is hosting a virtual public meeting on Thursday night, April 27th, to provide the update on the proposed improvements, that's what they call them, to Church Road between Greenwood Avenue and Rice's Mill Road and a little beyond each of those intersections. <coughs> um, uh, so that, that is basically an announcement. They did not give us a whole lot of warning. So uh, that was really unfortunate. And I think we heard very clearly that the public uh, needs the township to work with our taxpayers to make sure that that project does not hurt the township. So we'll look forward to that. Um, then uh, item B, the, the Earth Day activities for the 22nd and 23rd, um, the downtown Glens, and these are on our website, but uh, they stand repeating. Uh, downtown Glenside Arts Festival on Saturday from 11 to five, and that's always an exciting event. Uh, the Tucany uh, Creek Trail Fest the next day from 10 to two. That's gonna involve all kinds of activities, including cleanups. I think the cleanup actually starts at nine o'clock. Um, and um, the reckoning with enslavement along Old York Road, that's Saturday also on Earth Day from uh, 11 o'clock to 3.30, but there is a particular program focusing on wall, on wall house at two o'clock uh, where they'll be reading the first um, protest against slavery in America. Um, it dates from 1688 at that site. So this is a very big deal uh, and has uh, gained the interest of all the historical commissions throughout the region. Uh, it is a big deal. There's going to be um, a a, a monument, a sign put there. Um, if you look on the uh, website, it does ask for uh, you to register just to, to RSVP so that they have some idea for refreshments. Um, uh, and as I say, there are all kinds of Earth Day activities on our website. Any other announcements to add? Madam yes. Chair. Commissioner Armin. Yeah, always an announcement. Uh, so so uh, two, um, one is that on April 29th, the Glenside Farmer's Market is uh, returning to its location at the Glenside SEPTA station. Um, so come down for your uh, fresh uh, flowers and plants and food and, and such uh, on, uh, on uh, April 29th. And then 
Secondly, a shameless plug for the Cedarbrook Theater's performance of In the Heights, which is happening uh, tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday. Get your tickets at the door. Uh, show not to be missed. Thank you. I understand it rivals the Disney version. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Commissioner Lewis. I don't have an announcement. I just have a quick question related to the one of the announcements. The PennDOT meeting on the 27th seems, sounds like a lot um, is expected uh, from PennDOT on that day, uh, as well as hearing from the residents. What leverage do we have, if any, to possibly delay the start of the product a project based on uh, the outcome of the 27th meeting. Um, not about to answer that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll turn it over to our manager. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I'd have to talk with our, probably our township engineer to, to understand that better. Okay, thank you. Well, I, certainly we don't have leverage if we don't act and if we don't advocate. Yep, that's right. So uh, I, think, I think we have to be the leverage we're expecting. Absolutely. Just a um, comment, if I can, Commissioner Rappaport. Sure, go point, ahead. And that is that part of what we may be able to do is bring the Army Corps in on that since there are some considerations with respect to stormwater that could have an impact. So in fact, if the Army Corps issue is brought to the surface, they, the federal folks always take precedence over, uh, over PennDOT. So maybe that's part of what we can look into using our township engineer and moving through um, the next you know, consideration phase of that process. That might give us a little bit of leverage. Okay. And PennDOT has said in the past that they are getting federal funds for this and that's why they needed to do it when they are doing it. Or if we wanted not to proceed with the project, uh, you know, that's up to us. Uh, but that's just something they've told us uh, yeah. in past meetings and I, I don't know it's relevant. They can, get they can get extensions. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're gonna have to push. Exactly. So thank you. Yes. Madam Chairperson, one more announcement. Sure, please, President Norris. Um, so Earth Day is a busy day and there are lots of things and unfortunately they conflict. So it's- uh, <laughs> you have to, you have to Oh, you can team. build them. You can, I, I, you should see my calendar on Earth Day. <laughs> well, try this at 9, 9.30 in the morning, the Melrose Park Neighbors Association is going to be doing some planting uh, at High School Road. And at ten, from 10 to noon, the Friends of High School Park at High School Park um, are asking people to come and help out uh, with planting. Both very, very important projects, right? Thank you. Um, uh, Commissioner Rappaport? Yes, Rappenport? sure, go um, ahead. Um, on, on a sort of a sadder note, on Saturday will right. be the um, home going service for Ms. King, who was unfortunately um, murdered in our township and she is a resident in our, in our township and her son goes to EP. Her service will be 10 a.m. Saturday at um, oh the church, right? Uh, Salem, <laughs> Salem Baptist. Baptist. Salem, Salem. I should know that. It's my church. Salem Baptist Church in Roslyn. Um, her service is on Saturday starting at 10 a.m. And the viewing actually starts at 8 o'clock. At 8 o'clock. So yeah. those of and us who need to get to the Earth Day uh, events <laughs> yeah. are going to be able to be there. You can go there a little bit early. Yes. So sadly, yes, my right. service is there. Thank you. Ms. Camarota, uh, you're on mute. And, you and um, both. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the first part of the meeting, but just in response to the project that's coming uh, forward, um, uh, and to kind of follow up with uh, Commissioner Dwight's comment, uh, it does feel as if it's been wait, 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 and now it's rush, rush, rush. And the pace about it that feels rushed for the neighbors is that we're trying to open this door to have conversation. And um, 
I know that the board leader seems to welcome this to happen, but a, a deeper concern in the midst of all of what we're going through is that it's such a large project and it's going to impact not just the immediate neighborhoods, but because of the intense um, detours that are gonna take place and the fact that there's the five schools, the four nursing homes and um, the, the employees and the students and the parents and the buses, we're just, our heads are spinning and we need the time if just for uh, an hour or two to uh, sit with our ward commissioners, which uh, yeah, you know we have agreed to, you have agreed to do, uh, but also to draw some attention. And this I would direct to the other commissioners that this is going to impact a much broader area than we can imagine. And there's going to be so many detours, and there's going to be so much. Uh, cut through traffic going on. Um, I think we all need to pay attention real closely in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I am concerned about um, the side streets. I keep hearing from neighbors what's going to happen, what's going to happen. Uh, I mean, at the very least, I don't know what the police chief is planning, but can we get some traffic barricades up the first week so people don't think that they can actually cut through the neighborhoods in droves uh, every rush hour every hour per rush hours like the rush hours that not just for the entire time but there's a hundred cars if I'm in Greenwood Avenue and I try to get my driveway near Washington Lane I can count 50 cars coming one way and 50 cars going another way volumes just between the two lights there's just so much traffic over here whether it's moving or sitting still and we really have to um pay attention here because people are going to try to cut through and um you know and a lot of it is because they're not informed i'm not i've talked to a lot of neighbors over the past two weeks and they don't know about it so I'd really uh, I'd like to reiterate that sometime this week, perhaps on Tuesday, if the neighbors and the commissioners are available, that we uh, go over a couple of these items, put the neighbors, you know, a little bit of rest about what's going to happen. And thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, I will make myself available for Tuesday. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Me too. And I, I hope, uh, based on what we've heard this evening too, and, and some of the correspondence we've had, that our staff will work with us on that and, and also be available. Um, okay. Other, uh, we have moved into Citizens Forum for Public Affairs. Uh, any other citizens? I slid right into it there. Yeah from announcements, it's an easy segue. All right, no other no other comments for public affairs. I'll call, before I adjourn, there's another meeting coming up, finance tonight, so stay tuned. Okay, I'll uh, call for adjournment. All so in favor. Moved. So moved. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much.